Uh, good morning. It's good to have you here. You are here in the capacity of... Uh... I'm Secretary General of the European Federation of Catholic Family Associations in Europe. And my name is Maria Hildingsson, a name which is Swedish. And I am a Swedish citizen as well. Sweden. Well, Sweden uh, was said to be the Saudi Arabia of political correctness. Uh, I know that you are on the opposite side. You are very much involved in the problem of uh, family and uh, anything that is connected with the defense of family. Could you please uh, share with our conference participants the experience you have uh, uh, in Sweden or in more general in Scandinavia? Uh, uh, surely so. Um, I would start by saying that um, I generally talk about Sweden as being the kingdom of political correctness. And indeed, it is very politically correct. Sweden is probably the most politically correct out of the three Scandinavian countries, which are Norway, Sweden and Denmark. And Sweden is the country that has gone the furthest when it comes to implementing gender into society by gender mainstreaming, by social engineering. In Poland, you've fought the pensée unique, as you would say in French, the, the sole way of thinking, the unique opinion that is allowed for many decades, and you won that battle. However, in Sweden, political correctness is very important and prevails. And many Swedish citizens would believe that uh, the Swedish model is quite normal. Uh, we have the idea of sharing a work between men and women, which is, as such is not a bad model, but it goes very, very far. And what lies behind this social engineering is the idea that the woman, first of all, has to be freed from her duties as a mother, so society will take care of children. And this, of course, stems back to the idea we have about sexuality, which in its turn leads us to what we're talking about today, which is gender. In Sweden, you can see that the social engineering is applied from the cradle to the tomb, from the beginning of life until the end of life. The beginning of life that starts in certain uh, preschools, which are the, let's say, the, the um, trials where uh, the genus or gender uh, pedagogy is applied. This also stretches into the school and um, for an, as an example you may see that um, in Swedish classes, so the, the um, language which is uh, the most important to any Swedish child, whatever their origin might be, they will learn how to deconstruct the traditional stories to create traditional stories with new characters, replacing the princess by a man and so forth. Take it a step further, there is also the LGBT certification of police, of playgrounds, of dentists, of um, homes for elderly people. So we can see that this social engineering stretches across society Another example which illustrates this very well is uh, the fact that the annual Gay Pride in Stockholm has become a social event which can't be missed by any social entity, including the Swedish Lutheran Church, that recently decided to implement LGBT certification of all the working places that belong to the Lutheran Church. Just as a um, small introduction to what the Lutheran Church means in Sweden was the state church until the year 2000 and many many Swedes are still members of this church. This church also offers preparation for youth which are 14-15 years old for what is called the confirmation. The Lutheran confirmation is the, the key moment in uh, the youth's life where you can become an adult in the Swedish tradition and the Swedish society at least historically. And now there are preparations specifically for the LGBT youth. Now, behind this, there is social engineering. And one of the most strong examples of this was presented in September last year. As school started, a new program was presented by the Swedish 
Family Planning Organization, which was one of the founders of the International Planned Parenthood Federation in the 1950s. It's called RFSU, and it is also the organization that created the Swedish LGBT lobby a couple of years ago. So we can see that all these issues are very interconnected. Now, this organization, they proposed material, pedagogical material, for schools, for primary and secondary schools, where for each topic, whether it be maths, biology, history, Swedish, foreign languages, sports, arts, whatever, you name it, sex is on the agenda. As an example, in physics, youth which are 13, 14 years old would be introduced into the resistance of um, a condom which they would have to measure. And in the chemistry class, they would have to understand the interaction between the lubrification products and the condoms. Bringing sex into every topic in school, at every age, starting at seven, this has upset parents across Sweden. And I think that the capacity to change things do, does lie with the parents. Shall I continue a bit on that? Please. Yes. And what did the parents do? Well, many NGOs, social uh, networks and so forth, started working together to try to offer an alternative to this pedagogical program. And they started working on a program which could be offered to schools. Now, what is in common among all these different actors is that they are all Christians. They come from different Christian de denominations. In Sweden, there are Lutherans, as I already mentioned, but there are also Orthodox, Catholics, Pentecostals, and so forth. The Swedish Christian um, society is also a mixture of many different um, cultural backgrounds, where there are about 130 nationalities in the Catholic Church, for example. But they found that this is extremely important and it's not possible for any of our groups to carry this project alone. So they started working on this. It is not yet presented, but I think this is what can make it a change. The parents which are um, reinforced in their duty and their right as parents to choose the education for their children. They are the first and the primary educators of the children. There is also a very interesting example coming from Norway in 2010, a Norwegian sociologist named Harald Eja made a documentary which was broadcasted on the Norwegian state television on prime time in spring 2010. It was called Brainwash. Brainwash is a documentary about how we're being brainwashed about the idea that men and women can be equally replaced, that there is absolutely no difference between men and women. And he went to see Norwegian researchers who were working on gender. He interviewed them on different areas of their research and he then went to see other researchers in the United Kingdom and in the United States, which had completely different ideas about what they were saying. When this was broadcasted in Norway, it led to a strong public debate. And in the months that followed, although there was no official communication about this, the funding of the gender research programs was not renewed. This was very shocking, of course, for the Norwegian researchers. And it was also very shocking for their Swedish colleagues. Sweden did the contrary. There was so much fuss about this in Sweden that the Swedish National Council for Research actually decided to give more money, not to reduce their budget, but to give even more money so as to compensate what was happening in Norway. Now, a third example of what can be done, in Sweden there are several bloggers, several journalists who are writing about these issues and they managed to introduce bit by bit a reflection in a country where the social correctness, the political correctness prevails. What we do see from this experience from Scandinavia is that it is a matter of working on the long term. It might be possible sometimes to make a difference on the short term, but this really lies within education, education of minds, opening the minds, showing that there are different ways we can proceed in society, and strengthening the parents, opening their eyes, showing them what's going on in the schools. 
school is very important but can never replace the parents in the education of their children. So my message to you in Poland would be strengthen the networks of parents, help the parents, support them, but they are the ones who can make a difference. They can also be members of NGOs, they can support NGOs that will do work at the political level, but it all starts within the home, within the family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's perfect. Okay. Thank you.